So how did you um, how did you initially sync up with the FF? Oh, that's funny. You know, I uh, like like uh, everyone who was involved with early network communications and got a modem in the early 80s. Uh, I was very excited to be on the internet in the early days and, and on the proto internet, BBSs and BBSs that had Usenet gateways and FiderNet gateways and all kinds of things. And, and I ended up um, with some of the people I met on those BBSs uh, doing a startup. We did uh, an open and uh, we raised a lot of money in the uh, in the capital markets there was a lot of money sloshing around so we raised like 19 million dollars and um, then uh, Napster not only got sued but its investors got sued and not only did its investors got get sued but like their investors got sued so it wasn't just their VCS it was like the insurance companies that had given the VCS money to gamble with and all of a sudden, every VC that had a peer-to-peer -peer company in their portfolio went, oh my God, we are going to die. And so they showed up at our door and they were like, whatever you're doing, stop right now. Don't get us sued. Don't get our, our, our partners sued. You're going to, you know, like, don't ruin us. Explain how, why it is we shouldn't just pull the plug on you now. And a bunch of our programmers had come from the Cult of the Dead Cow, who were this early hacker group. Uh, Beto O'Rourke revealed recently that he was a member when he was a teenager. That was oh, wow. a secret. Uh, and um, and and CDC had gotten like terrorized by tech companies, notably Microsoft. They they released a tool that um, exploited the back office uh, management tool that let uh, network administrators manage the their client PCs. They released a tool called Back Orifice that let you take over any computer, any Windows PC in the world and completely control it, just basically to prove that Microsoft had built this very dangerous interface and failed to secure it. And, and you know, we're just terrorized by Microsoft. So EFF had defended them. And when we got into legal trouble, uh, our programmers were like, you need to talk to EFF. And so first we had this conference call with them and, and me, like all around, like one of those old Nortel phones on someone's desk at the office. And then, you know, I moved out to the Bay Area to open our San Francisco office. This was all in Toronto where I grew up. And, uh, and, and I started spending more time with them. And it became really clear that I was a .org guy. I was not a .com guy. Hmm. And uh, Microsoft was going to buy our company. And um, they were going to make me be a DRM evangelist, which is like, if you know anything about me, that is just hilariously bad. That's like... Uh, you know, putting Andrea Dworkin in charge of Playboy or something like it's a it's a very weird mismatch. And I just was like, actually, you know what? I'm going to go work for EFF instead. So I had I the company had been taken over by our VCs because they were like, oh, if Microsoft is going to buy you, we're just going to like pull this really slippery shit and seize control of the company and, and take a bunch of the founder shares so that um, we can get a big payday. Uh, and, um, and so I'd, I'd had my, my, uh, shares gutted and they were going to move me back to Toronto and there was a moving van on my way to, uh, on its way from Toronto to my apartment in San Francisco to pick up my stuff. And I was flying back to Toronto to look at apartments, to look at actually a spare room in one of our programmers houses to go live in. And as I was about to leave town, I was at the airport, I got a call from the executive director of the Electronic Frontier Foundation was then Sherry Steele. And Sherry was like, we want to offer you a job. And I was like, oof, you know, I'm about to leave San Francisco and move to Toronto. And she said, well, uh, you know, the job is here if you change your mind. And I was like, give me the weekend to think about it. And I got back on Monday and I called her up and I took the job. And she was like, I was 100% sure you were not going to take this job. And now it's been, I think, 22 years. And I'm still with him. So I think it was the right call.